label. If the label shows your intent, wear it. There's a label here. People know what you are, what you stand for. The younger generation, they say Islam is not in your head, Islam is not in your beard. Very clever. And I want to tell them, put it on. In your buses, in the trains, wherever you are, put it on. That's your time now. This label, don't throw it away. Preserve it. Encourage your children to have it. <laughs> In this particular translation, the big advantage is that at the end there is an index, a very comprehensive index. What do you want to know about Islam? Anything you want to know, you open the index. I spoke about Surah Nisa. Maybe you don't know where Surah Nisa is. In your Quran at home, the Arabic Quran, you don't know where to find Nisa. There are 114 chapters. This is only one of them. Where will you find it? So, I said, open the index, just like a dictionary. Nisa and the N. N-I-S-A-A, -A, Nisa. This is chapter 4. 4 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Once you found it, I say ayah number 86. Easy to find, 86. Once you found chapter 4, 86 is easy to find. You found it. Now, I want you to go home and check it out. Not only me, anybody, any learned man, he gives you any references from the Quran, make a habit of going home and checking up. Not that you distrust the speaker, you think he was deceiving you, you think he was pulling a fast one on you. No, no. When you go and check it up, you are strengthening your knowledge. You see the verse, you read it, you see the translation, you say, yes, this is what the Shaykh Imam was telling me, yes. And the commentary, further expansion, the new angles, which the Sheikh might not have had time to explain to you. All this, your knowledge is increasing. And once you have done that, now you can share it with other people. See, this is the secret. You must share. To get more, you must share. But just by listening, you get very, very, very elated. MashaAllah. The Sheikh delivered a beautiful lecture. What? What did he say? <laughs> this was very good. It was very nice. Beautiful. What? And maybe... He touched one dozen subjects in 15 minutes. Which one are you going to remember? No. Reference. And something you like, maybe he didn't give you a reference. Go and ask him. Say, Shah, where about is this in the Quran? So he says, this is in Surah Nisa. Where about what? He said, well, look up the fourth ruku. You know the section. He might give you that way. Or separa so and so. So many separas. But if you can get the chapter and the verse, very easy. You want to know, what do you want to know? This book here, what do you want to know? Everything on your fingertips. You want to know about marriage in Islam. Whom you can marry, whom you can't marry. Look at the end, marriage. Everything's given to you. That you can't marry mushriks. Don't allow your daughters to marry mushriks. Of course, you can't marry your mother, your sister, your daughter, that you know. But it's all there. Even that is there. You can't marry your aunties. It's all there. But bulk of our people, they don't know. They're getting caught out. My daughters, meaning the Indian Muslims' daughters in Natal and the Transvaal, they're running away with the Mushriks. See, because Indian to Indian. We are same nation. Allah says, وَلَا تَنْكِهُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُمِنَّا And do not marry Mushrik women until they believe. But who knows the Quran? We don't know. Here I find that our Muslim girls, Malay girls, are marrying Mushriks. They don't know. The other guy is an Indian. I'm an Indian. So Didar is an Indian. He said yes. Mr. Muhammad is an Indian. He said yes. That Mr. Parker is an Indian. He said yes. They are Indian Muslims. They are all Muslims. Yes. But the other guy comes on sing. She doesn't know the difference between sing and song. She marries the fellow. She's Indian. It's another Indian. No. She must know. Allah tells you, don't marry Mushriks until they are converted, and so on. Marriage. You know about divorce. And the D, you find divorce. There is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Talaq. Whole chapter deals with the subject. Allah Bari Ta'ala, He took the trouble to explain to us in detail that if it must come to that, how to proceed, how to do the job. Don't do it the way your fathers have been doing. My fathers. When they get angry, what they do? They say, Talaq, Talaq, Talaq. Finish. 
Do Malays also do that? Do they? I don't know. Look, I haven't had a chance to ask anyone. Do the Malays also, when they get angry with the wife, they want to get rid of her, what do they say? Do they do that? Talak, talak, talak. Do they do that? I hope not. But the Indian Muslims, my people, we do that. But that's what we heard. You want to get rid of your wife? It's just easier than eating peanuts. Peanuts you have to shell. This you don't have to shell even. Just say, talak, talak, talak. Then they regret. This woman used to work so hard. Look after your children. Did so many things for you for nothing. You can't even hire an African woman to do that for you. So you want to bring her back. So they go to the, our Molwis, what you call chefs. Our Maulanas. No, no, our Imams and our, our chefs. We call them Molwis and Maulanas. You go to them. He said, look, man, I made a mistake. What to do now? I want her back. So look, I'll show you an easy way out. You make that wife of yours, ex-wife, to marry some old man like Didai. But there's a condition. There's a condition attached. That that wife of yours and Didai must go into a place where they can have sex. Otherwise it's incomplete. You must go have that chance. And then subsequently if Didai wants to divorce and if the woman wants a divorce and he divorces her and she waits for another three months, then he says, nah, he, he can remarry you. What is it? Filthy, dirty. You made a mistake, and now you make this poor woman to pay for it, making her to sleep with another man. In her life, she never slept with anyone besides you. Now you make her to sleep with another man, to make her feel for you. You call it halala. That's what they call it. I don't know, look, I don't know about the sickness that you might have among you, but now, I'm just only telling you that the fools, if they only read the Quran, they won't do that. Allah gives you a system that if you must, here is the procedure. Over a period of three months, and you start, how to start, when to start. Everything is spelled out for you. Allah doesn't spell out in the Quran how to make salat. You know that? He doesn't spell it out. He's telling us, look at the Prophet. You know how to do salat? The details, how you stand, how you sit, your, your hands up to the ears, and this way or that way, all this. What? He said, look at the Prophet. How to make wudu? Look at the Prophet. How to do hajj? Look at the Prophet. He tells you, has yes, song yes, the detail. Look at the Prophet. Look at the Prophet. But here for Talaq, he doesn't say, look at the Prophet. You know why? Because it means, to look at the Prophet means that he must divorce one of our mothers to show us how to divorce. That filthy, dirty thing, abominable thing that our Nabi must do to our mother to show us how to do it. No. Allah won't do that. He spells it out for you. Do it this way. If you had the book, you read it, you won't fall into the mess. This is the book. So, my dear brother, you owe it to yourself, everybody, to have a book. You owe it to your children to have it. It will improve your English. Wallah, your English will improve. Your children won't have to read Shakespeare and Milton to improve their English even. This book will do that. Knowledge of God. Spiritual elevation. Details about your religion, about everything an encyclopedia, and you don't have to read any other book rubbish. We are hungry to read. The general world is hungry for reading, except the Muslims. We are not a reading people. But if you have any hunger, I said finish this book first. 2,000 pages, it's a lifetime study, this book alone. Once you finish this, anything, what this great man say, what that great man say, everything. But priority number one, Allah's kalam. And this book, I assure you, will keep you busy for a lifetime. If you can afford it. Buy one for your employer, the guy who employs you, the non-Muslim. Buy it for him, present it to you. Or your employee, somebody working for you, present it to you. As a birthday present, as a wedding present, as a Christmas present, give the Quran, five rand. And the guy will remember you for a lifetime. An encyclopedia of 2,000 pages. You don't tell him you paid five rands for it. He knows what's the value of this book. He'll know. He'll know. If you're half a dozen in the family who can read, get half a dozen Qurans. And once a week, Ba'd al-Maghrib, after dinner, sit down around the table, tell your son or your daughter, I said, read this to your mother, explain to her. So while the child is reading, the Arabic is improving because it's getting rusty, we are losing it. Make the child read and read the meaning. The language is improving. An explanation. It's explained to your mother. I've got explained it to you as well. Share this. And a bond is created in the family.
stronger than any other factor that can bring you together. The family around the Quran, Allah's kalam, becomes one. So in Surah Nisa, Allah says, وَإِذَا حُجِّيْتٌ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنُ مِنْهَا أَوْدُّهَا Remember I said, remember me saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And you responded with wa alaikum assalam. Some of you silently might have continued wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I didn't hear it, but maybe some of you did. But whatever you did was according to instructions. Allah says in this ayah, see somebody wishes you a courteous greeting which I did, you must wish him something better. وَإِذَا حُجِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَةٍ مِنْهَا Something better. If I said just simply, Assalamu alaikum, you could have said, وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُ Better than what I have given you. You respond. That's Allah says. أَوْ رُدُّهَا Or something equal. Not worse. Not ignoring it. You wish me something better. If you can't, you're too busy. You're at least something equal to that. I say, Salaam alaikum, Salaam alaikum. Good enough. Or you say, Wa alaikum, Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. If you can do that, Nurun ala Nur. The best of thing you can do. And Allah is careful in keeping account. <laughs> indeed made the Quran easy to understand and remember then is there any that will receive admonition learn the language of the Creator's last testament in learning Quranic Arabic every Monday Wednesday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 7 p.m. UAE on Peace TV where truth is hidden misleading quotations create confusion where truth is hidden lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion where truth is hidden manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge this very hidden truth creates false propaganda mayhem chaos disorder and turmoil in our lives and the world order but is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Friday to Wednesday at 9 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 10 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. The Prodigy Dai of Islam Farid Nai I challenge any human being to point out a single fundamental of Islam. The illustrious son of the world famous orator of Islam, Dr. Zakir Nani. Ekam Braham Dutya Naste. Bhagwan Eki hai, Dusa nahi hai, nahi hai, nahi hai, zara bhi nahi hai. Motivating towards the true path. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. With his thrilling words and inspirational temperament. Demanding dowry from the would-be bride is completely prohibited in Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the one endowed with knowledge and wisdom. I am proud to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Join Farik Naim, appearing in Teens Star, next on Peace TV. Generally, we Muslims here in the Cape are good at wishing one another salams. But this quality of wishing salams is being lost in the rest of the world. You, my brethren, I'm congratulating you. 
Now don't let that go to your head. So far, you are in this country of ours, you are the best Muslims for that. And I'll tell you why you are best Muslims for that. What has happened to us, the Indian Muslims? The Muslims in Mauritius. The Muslims all over. What is happening to them? You are in this still the best of Muslims. I don't want to get anything out of you by telling you these things. That you may buy my Quran for five rands. That's not the purpose, you know that. Allah tells you to wish people salams. Any culture's greeting, you wish him something better or something equal. Now, it's, it's a universal courtesy. People will accept this as good behavior. Whether you are Muslim or Hindu, wishing people, wish them, man. They're not Muslim, wish them. Good morning, your neighbor, non Muslims. Good. Khumara, Khainant, Allah, there are blessings attached to that. But this, this guy here, I don't know him. So our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa he said, wish everyone you know and wish everyone you don't know. No excuse. He said, I don't know the fellow. He says, wish him, man. Wish him. You know him? Wish him. If you don't know him, it's a blessing. You, the angels of God. These are the factors that bring people together. Love. These are your guardian angels. Your neighbor, one day there's a riot taking place. So kill the Malays. Kill the Moors. The neighbor says, no, that guy is a very good fellow. You have Khoimara, Khoimara. That becomes your guardian angel. Allah says, no, the guy is a good fellow. This neighbor fellow. Maybe the other Malay kill him. But this fellow is all right. <laughs> Look, this is a factor, human beings. You know, always brought them into your house for a cup of tea. You say, no, no, this guy is a good fellow. Man. Leave him alone. Can save your child's life. That's that salam, salam. In his language, khuimara. Good evening. Sagabona. The African sagabona. Shh, what it can do for you, Allah. That's just that. What it does for you. Creating angels. These are the angels around you. They'll guard you. They'll look after you. When the problem arises, this principle is good. An African, I say, wish him. The colored, wish him. Africana, wish him. Wish everybody. Wish everyone you know and wish everyone you don't know. But what to wish? That is the problem. What are you going to wish the fellow? Fortunately, that's why I said, fortunately, the Muslims in the Cape, a lot of you wear these kufiyas. So it's easy. Assalamu alaikum. Whether I know you or don't. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. But it's not happening in other places. We have started taking away throwing away the kufya, this innocent thing. We don't value it. Muslims don't value it anymore. And when they do, they go to the masjid, they take it out of the pocket, they put it on, and when they come out, quickly goes into the pocket, as if they're terrified. They don't want to be recognized as Muslims. Inferiority complex. And the clever, they're clever fools, wallah, they're clever fools. And when I'm talking to them, I said, look, man, this is a very, very essential thing. Identity. Identify yourself. It gives you power. It boosts your morale. It terrifies the enemy. And innocent. Nobody can say you're provoking him, you're looking for a fight. When this little humble thing you put on, you know what it's doing to him. This puppy. You are a challenge. 300 years they tried to convert your fathers. They hammered you people, they enslaved you people, changed your surnames, changed your language, made you to do the Kum Carnival, join them too. Our sons, our brothers. You can't say, no, they're not my brothers, they're not Muslims. They're Muslims who do the Kum Carnival. Muslims, no? They're also there. Yes, 300 years, they did it to us. But still, you are there. You are more than what they could ever expect by natural procreation, biological factors. What your forefathers were brought here from Malaysia, Indonesia, and from Bengal. This is not the natural product by physiological procreation. Mm -hmm. You have been able to steal from the other communities, strengthening your own community more and more and more. They know that. Instead of digesting you, you have become the indigestible material after 300 years. 
Of course, under the new policies, we are now in greater danger. Previously, we were living together in District 6, in the Malay old quarters, here, there, and we were able to defend ourselves. Now, for every five colored homes, one Muslim. For every five colored homes, two, three colored homes, one Muslim. They dispersed us. Our son will fall in love with a colored girl, Christian girl. And our daughter will fall in love with a Christian boy, colored boy. And Islam gets diluted. Dangers, dangers, dangers. There are greater dangers now than before. That attack was a good thing. It kept us together. We were on the defense. But now we are relaxed. We are living together. You know, they come into our homes, we go into their homes. You can't help it. Your wife runs short of salt water, she, she goes next door. They run, some are run short of salt water, they, they come to your house. That affinity is there. And there is a greater danger in we losing out. But now, the identity. The Indian Muslim, the younger generation, very clever. So my people, very clever. And I'm talking about a headgear. They say Islam is not in the hat. Islam is not in the beard. Can you argue against that? Islam is not in your hat. Islam is not in your beard. That's all right. You've got to give in. It's a fact. Islam is not in the hat. If you put this hat on a kafir, murtad, that doesn't make him a Muslim, does it? No. The Sikhs, they have better beards than the Muslims. You know, no, I speak. Makarios, that bishop in, in Cyprus, you know, he had the most beautiful beard that you can know. I haven't seen a Tablighi brother anywhere in my life who's had a big size beard as the Makarios. Look, admit it. Does that make him a Muslim? No. So Islam is not in the hat, Islam is not in the beard. So I'm asking, where is your Islam? He says, in the heart. He says, very good. No trouble. Between you and Allah, no problem. Between you and Allah, no problem. If you deserve Jannah, He'll give you Jannah. If you deserve Jahannam, hell, He'll give you hell. He knows. He won't make a mistake with you. With a beard or without a beard, or, He won't make a mistake. But I said, look man, me, your brother, your uncle, I want to recognize you. I want to wish you salams. When I see you, I want to wish you salams. You're depriving me of that. Suppose you came to Durban, and you're looking around outside the masjid. There are hundreds of Muslims milling to go into the mosque, but you can't recognize anybody. They look like anybody else. They look like Hindus, they look like Christians, because in our looks we are the same. At times in our surnames we are the same with the other guys. Like you are. Mr. Brown, our half is our Qadi, is a Brown. And you'll find another Brown is a Christian. Correct. I had a lady yesterday, Mrs. Johnson, she's a Muslim. I said, your husband is this is also Johnson. I said, is he a Muslim? I said, yes. Living on Johnson Road. <laughs> yes. Look, but now I have to ask, are you Muslim? Are you Muslim? Mr. Johnson came, Mr. Johnson, I don't know whether he's a Muslim, but if he's got something on, I know he's a Muslim. I want to know so I can wish you. If I wish you salams before you can wish me, I get more blessing. Between our Nabi Karim sallam, and the Sahabas, there was a continuous competition. And our Nabi Karim sallam, was ever the first. The Sahabas were trying to beat him in wishing salams first, and, but they couldn't. They couldn't. He was the first. And he was the last to withdraw his hand from another's clasp. Last. Anybody shook hands with him? He's not the first to withdraw it. Like some of us do, you know, you give your hand like a piece of ham. You know? <laughs> no. He was the last to withdraw, that means. He taught us, he says, you see, the younger should wish the elder first. He said, you see, the guy who's coming down the steps must wish the one who's going up the steps. Nature. The guy who's riding a horse or a camel or a donkey, he must wish the one who's walking. All this detail he gave us. But the problem is, what are we going to wish the guy that we see? We don't recognize who he is. And this, the Muslim, the Indian Muslim, he is going off. He's too clever. Islam is not in the hat. Islam is not in the beard. It's in the heart. But I said, now that means we can't recognize you. We don't know who you are. Unless it's very close relationship. We don't know, generally, we don't know who's who. So I go to Mauritius. A lot of Indian Muslims there. 
and nobody wishes one another salam say, in that country. Hardly. Some of the leading young men were taking me from meeting people. In the street, these leading guys of the society, nobody is wishing salams. Nobody. I'm wondering, I'm inquisitive, I want to know why. Reason is because they all look alike, the Creole, the Indian, the, the Hindu, the Christian, everybody is the same. No identity. So now you don't want to make a fool of yourself. If you don't know, the guy looks familiar. But you say, Asalaamu Alaikum, I say, what's that? What do you say? You don't want to feel embarrassed. So rather, keep quiet. In Canada, the Muslims now, they say, hi, hi. Because it's, it's, it's safer. You don't make a mistake. You say, hi. He knows, hi. <laughs> you might say, Salam, what's that? You swearing me? <laughs> no, no, you don't swear anybody. You don't want to create problem unnecessary. <laughs> so when I return from Mauritius after this experience, they give me a chance to speak in the Juma Masjid. Bible. And I shared this, this ayah. I read it and I started to explain. I said, you see, in Mauritius, this is my experience. People don't wish one another. And the reason is, they don't have a headgear. See, they are shy to have a headgear. Finished, that means gone, now you don't know who's who.